I'm Ramsey the loud one. I'm Jesse the short one. Put, Put us, us both, both into one. We are. Lots of noise, always too fast. Lots of laughs. Here's our podcast, the loud and short of it. Hi and welcome to Loud and Short of It. I'm Ramsey the Loud One. And I'm Jesse the Short One. And we got a banger of an episode for you this week. It is a variety hour. We are going to mm-hmm. talk about five subjects. Yep. Those subjects in order of importance are uh, video games, music, television, random, and then politics. Random before politics. I couldn't agree more. Yes, yes. Politics, the least important thing going on right now. <laughs> Um, no, that's an absolute lie. Yeah. Politics is the most important thing, especially for the next month. Yeah. Uh, okay. Get the fuck out and vote. And if you don't, you're a slimeball piece of shit human being. And that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, on if it. you're not voting, you need help. You got to figure something out. If you don't care about this, you're, you got to care about something, dude. Yeah. Um, okay. Ready to dive into it? Yeah. I think fuck it, why politics not? news for the first time ever. It's not all bad. It's not all bad this morning. No, it's not. It's kind of interesting or fun. I, yeah. And I assume the majority of our viewers have not watched any of the debates or have only catched highlights. Yeah. So we're going to give you kind of uh, our takes on what happened during the debates and just generally, if you haven't seen anything about them, what generally went down in them. Yeah. So, so far, uh, and we're going to, this is tailored to Texas. So we're going to go over the president debate, the vice president debate, uh, the Senate debate, the Texas Senate debate, yeah. and the upcoming presidential debate for the texas senate debate it, it it's not boring don't worry i know a lot of you i would have heard that and checked out it's more about like how it was done and whatnot yeah um but yeah you want to dive right into president yeah so that's the one that everybody should have watched yeah or should have not watched it was yeah. a fucking travesty i uh, i intentionally left the house <laughs> during it and i dipped and i was like all right i'm not watching that and then i got home immediately and i saw the memes on twitter because I was going to watch it the next day, and I saw all the memes on Twitter. I was like, nope, I stayed up till 1 a.m. watching it. Oh, God. What a shit fire. So you watched that by yourself. Yeah, 100%. Oh, that's nightmare. That's how that. I like watching stuff. I, I, I watch that in, in important basketball games by myself. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to be in fetal position in my bed, horrified. Uh, I'll Just to sum it up in one sentence, Trump interrupted the entire time. I think he got most of the talking time. The yeah. moderator didn't stop him. No. Trump argued with the moderator and said it with Biden for a good portion of it. Yeah. And just rambled like not like nonsensical shit interrupt like, of saying like that was a lie or something along yeah. those just blabbed he it felt like he was like trying to defend himself and it, for, like from fucking teenage girls he's it was, it was just it was more cringy than normal trump shit yeah I'll have to say. and i'll come out right now and admit that in 2016 i did not leave the clinton trump debates feeling like clinton had won or that trump made himself a fool no, Trump was fucking either. crazy, but he won the debates because he was just loud, obnoxious, and very funny and yeah. got attention. He did not get attention this time. It seemed like a toddler giving having a tantrum. Yeah, I feel like if you came out of this and then you, you thought Trump did well, it's like... You, I, you went into it hoping that and yeah. nothing would have changed your mind. He I think a lot of people worse. had the idea that Trump was going to pop in, crush the fuck out of Joe Biden, and then we were all going to be like, well, we told you so, but it didn't really go out like that, actually... The way Trump presented himself was fucking just super embarrassing, and it's usually yeah. not even like there's at least a fake fucking confidence to the man. But here it was just like watching an insecure fucking teenager. You also have to keep in mind he did have corona. Yeah, that's during fair. this time, and, and knew it and got and didn't take tests. Yeah, refused to take the test during it. So like maybe that's why it went so poorly. But who knows? We'll never know. No. Um couple other important things and we'll, we'll get to the most important thing that i think happened during that debate um joe biden as much as i don't like the guy held his own for a good part yeah he uh, at one point said man would you just shut up yeah and i felt like anybody with half a brain felt that deeply in their hearts of like yeah why yeah. don't you just shut up? Joe Biden gave off like Papa vibes, and it made me like him more. Which is very one, easy when you're 80. Years yeah. Old. At one point, he was just like, "Now nah, I just can't with this clown." He goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that." <laughs> this guy, and I was like, "Fuck off, Joe Biden. <laughs> stop, stop winning me over." At another point, um, Joe Biden was talking about his son that uh, served overseas. And then yeah. Donald Trump immediately started talking about Joe Biden's son, who did get paid a shitload of money by a Ukrainian company when yeah. Joe Biden was vice president, which I think should have been fair game and could have been the new emails from 2016. Yeah. But the way that Trump did it, Joe Biden immediately got eight times louder than Trump, 
shut him the fuck down and said, don't talk about my family. And yeah. it was just like, well, you lost in the debate now. Like, was that he, when he was talking about his son with a drug problem? Yeah, because instead of making yeah. it about barisma and everything, he was like, your yeah. son likes cocaine. And yeah, it was embarrassing, dude. Like he says, yeah, he says your son likes cocaine. And then Joe Biden was just like, fuck off. And then he looks to the camera and was like, my son had a drug problem. My son got over a drug problem. I'm proud of my son. And you just saw on Twitter, like, a hundred and fucking fifty tweets of just people just being like, "I hate Joe Biden." And I was fucking bawling when he said that, yeah. and I was like, "Dude!" And it was, he even applied it. He was like, "Tons of Americans have drug yeah. problems and get over them, and they like they shouldn't be attacked for that." Before Corona, like, opioid like, addiction was the number one killer in America. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a good it was a good debate for Joe and a fucking terrible one for Trump yeah. because and this is this is what I think is the biggest takeaway from this far and away at one point. The moderator directly asked Trump if he would denounce white supremacists after, like, uh, Charlottesville, where he said that there was good people on both sides. Yeah. And, you know, the other 800 fucking racist things yeah. that he said that are just, like, not, not racist enough that you can point to it and be like, that was just unadulterated racism. A lot of but, people could point and be like, ah, it's a gaffe. But, like, this one, like, she, he, like, uh, literally brought up Proud Boys, uh, Boo Boo Boys, someone else. And was the like, boys, yeah, yeah, did de- denounce uh, or uh, condemn white supremacy, and, and instead of saying stand down, e- even even a- a- anything along the lines of saying that they were doing something wrong, he said stand back and stand by, yeah, and then immediately dove in that somebody has to do something about Antifa, yeah, which the most left thing Joe's ever fucking said in his career just went Antifa is not an organization, it's just an ideology, yeah, and you were just like what. The old man can figure yeah. that shit out. I think that another thing just, like, off of that is, like, it was just the easiest fucking dunk for the man. Yeah. Because everyone, it, even dumbass, like, fucking Republicans are all being like, well, of course I hate white supremacy. Could have just been a fucking tidbit on Twitter and no one would have fucking cared. And even and the white supremacists it. that do vote for him in fucking mass and nobody else, yeah. they would have just been like, oh, he had to say it. Yeah. Like, it, there was just nothing to lose by saying, I am I don't like white supremacists yeah. like that should be the easiest thing the most one of the most telling things about this aside from his blade racism is that he doesn't trust his base to not to not do the mental gymnastics anymore yeah which damn <laughs> <laughs> um overall i think if it just uh, oh well we we do have to talk were you going to get into the next thing biden said about fracking oh, yeah so th- yeah, let's focus on the, the sad part to end it. But yeah. Joe Biden, as good as I think he did as a debate of pulling in centrists and showing that Donald Trump's a fucking idiot to even right wingers, yeah. Um, Donald Trump or Joe Biden did turn away from any leftists that he could have. He said yeah. he wouldn't ban fracking. He said he's not for the Green New Deal. Yeah. Um, there was a couple other very. At one point, uh, they got they brought up for obvious reasons the Black Lives Matter movement and police brutality. Um, and Joe Biden's response basically broke down into, well, if we just funded them more and gave yeah. them better training, we could solve it. And you just like, oh, my God, man. Something I would have just gone into that debate 100% with a plan. Yeah. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. He said um, he, he wouldn't say law and order. It was it was just weird. It just yeah. didn't make any sense. Did, did Biden come out of this debate uh, better than Trump? 100%. Did Biden come out of this debate with me thinking, yes, this is the man. <laughs> Fuck no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that was the presidential debate. Trump needed a win in that one. If you believe polls, which I don't believe polls at all, no one should. They're the dumbest thing in the world. Yeah, have been proven wrong time and time again. Dude, but, even look at Joe Biden's Twitter. He's telling people stop fucking looking at polls. We yeah. do, I don't need you to see a poll and feel good. I need you to go to the bo- booth. Yeah. All right, let's get into the more boring one. The oh. AP. Who could have thought... What a big thought, smile I put on my face hearing that something was boring in politics. <laughs> who could have thought putting Kamala Harris and Mike Pence in a room would make it boring when those two are just filled with such fucking vibrant, amazing, non-political yeah. personalities? This was what every debate pre-2015 felt like. When I watched this, I felt like I was a little kid staying next to my dad in the living room. Because I, I remember like when, uh, when McCain and Obama was there, I was sat, I would sit with my dad and watch it, and I'd be like, oh, God, I don't care. This is boring. And now like, I got that same feeling, and I was like, no, that's good. That's a positive <laughs> fucking vibe, dude. I miss when politics was boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's those have nice to times to live. Follow it every 10 seconds. Uh, I don't even know how to really sum this one up. At one point, um, Mike Pence 
said that abortions have to be made illegal because women will get them the day before children are born. Yeah. Which is not true, and but they've been saying that for decades. Yeah. Kamala Harris said every party line Democrat take you could have yeah. and just didn't, didn't sway to the center or to the left anywhere, just followed party lines. I think the best we could do for this one is I definitely came out of this one liking Kamala a little more because before that See, before I this I I did I did not like Kamala Harris at all. Mm. Um, I still don't. I, yeah, I, I gained no love for her after. I that, liked but. her better because I saw how I, I felt like she held her own against Pence. But then again, I didn't expect Pence to be a normal person because I just I dude you never fucking see Pence talk. Yeah, all you see is news headlines of him being like. Oh, I fucking hate women. Uh, but gays need to be fucking indoctrinized. And then, oh, uh, I ratted on my fraternity brothers in college for having a keg, which yeah. he did. Yeah. Um, Mike I'll Pence, say not that this at. one was politics like usual. If you've ever paid attention, they dodged half the questions that were, they were asked. They yeah. just refused to answer them, both of them. You can't yeah. blame one or the other for it. Um, they actually did argue. Like, had good arguments back and forth without yeah. interrupting, but it was never about the questions the moderator asked. It was always just about random shit one of them had yeah. brought up. Um, and How then, dare you talk about this when you did this? Yeah. Very easy way to dodge a question. Yeah. Um, and then the number one thing, the elephant in the room, the fly. Oh, God. This fly, in the middle of the debate, fly. landed on uh, Mike Pence's rotting corpse as he was trying to get words out. Yeah. And, like, watching it at home, it was funny before any meme happened. There was just a fly on it. Yeah. And that fucker was there for, like, four minutes straight. Just, yeah. like, perched right on his perfectly manicured hair. Yeah. It was four minutes. I heard people were like, oh, it was there for, like, 30 seconds. Like, no, it was there for four it minutes. I remember there. we were sitting there watching and going, it's still fucking there. <laughs> <laughs> just do something, dude. Make it go away. I'm sure you didn't feel it. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, yeah. especially when your hair's all. Are, up is, are you making excuses for Mike Pence yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I think the I hated that fly because I just saw some just it was like the every jokes about every it. fucking person on Twitter thought they were like every like fucking white liberal thought they were the first comedian to ever yeah. exist. It was like, funny enough without up. any jokes. It was just hilarious yeah. watching somebody give very serious responses about yeah. what's plaguing our country while a fly is just chilling <laughs> on his fucking head. Fuck yeah. Mike Pence. That's everything for the <laughs> vice presidential debate. We gotta we gotta speed up politics. I promise fun stuff is on the is on the horizon. Yeah. Then we had the Senate debate. Yeah, I feel like we, we don't even really need to get into this one too deeply. I, I think we're just mostly talking about the uh the layout and how fucking perfect it was. If there's one to watch, watch in your and you live in Texas, watch this one. It was it felt like a debate that deserves to exist this year. Yeah. In in the future, in in yeah. the now times. When they asked questions, they brought up sources and just had them overlay on the screen so they you knew it wasn't just left wing or right wing media. They had quotes yeah. that they read. They were like, You said this on this date and then made them like John Cornyn's, I can't remember the exact quote, but they said it, and he was like, "Well, it didn't actually mean that." And then they just read the quote again, and they were like, "So what did it mean?" And like forced him to have to confront yeah. what he had said. There's, it was just funny also watching John Cornyn just like squirm up there because mm -hmm. like the moderator was asking him questions and he was barely getting by, and then MJ Hagar was like, "He's lying," and like yeah. even the moderators at one point she just goes, "I don't know why the fuck you're just letting him lie." And I was like, "Dude." MJ Hagar and me do not fall in the same uh, like uh, in the I don't same place. I agree with all of her policy. But yeah. fuck, dude, was that nice to see someone just look at a Republican in Texas and be like, "You're a fucking idiot." Yeah. Also, she did just make him look like a little schoolgirl because every time that he would start stuff or like call her out on anything, at one point she just pointed out she's like, "I'm a Texas Democrat. That is not. I don't. I don't answer to Chuck Schumer. I don't answer to Nancy Pelosi. I don't know why the fuck you keep bringing them up. Yeah. We're totally different fucking policies." Um. And then at, at multiple times, she just was like, I'm a Purple Heart veteran that has battle scars that got tattooed over, and you're some Ivy League fuckstick. And she yeah. just made him look like a fucking idiot up there multiple times. Yeah. At one point, he called, he said that she tacitly was accusing him of something, and she just went, I am not a tacit person. And yeah. I was like, yeah, that was yeah. as Texas as it fucking gets. <laughs> It was uh, the layout. They had a bell every time someone was finished talking. People were not going over on this. They finished their thought, and it was over. Mm. Um, I, it, it's Moderators it's actually held people to things. Yeah, and, they and pressed them, them. Squirmed their way out. It's how it's how they should all be. It made me so, – it was the first debate I got out of where I, I legitimately felt good. Not even just because John Corner got smacked. It felt good because I felt like people were held to a standard yeah. for the first time in fucking forever. 
Okay, and then the last thing. There's another presidential debate that's supposed to happen uh, when this comes out. It will be uh, two days after mm-hmm. that, uh, on the 15th. Um, Donald Trump has backed out of it. Won't do it no yeah. more. Said, yeah, I'm too scared. I don't want to do it. And that's just, like, a new thing for presidents to do. Yeah. Very, very interesting times we're living in. But uh, Joe Biden, I think very smartly, is just going to do it by himself. It's a town hall setting, so if you know what that means, it just means random people get to ask pre-approved questions, but like yeah. they get to ask what they want, yeah. not moderators or reporters asking the questions. It should be Pretty good. It'll, It'll be, be interesting. It's it, it's hard to get up there and do that. That's a that's a real challenging thing, and every, all politicians should be forced to do it. Yeah, that's everything. But yeah. in general, let's see what happens in the next month. It's gonna, yeah. a, it's gonna be a different world we're coming back to either fucking way in yeah. uh in one month or two weeks. Yeah. But we gotta get on the important news. Randy yeah. Marsh fucked a bat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, out of the politics and into the fucking fryer. Uh, for television this month, we watched the South Park pandemic special. Mm-hmm. Now I just wanna start this off. You like South Park a lot. Yeah. I don't fucking care that much about South Park. Think it's a great show. Gotta be honest, when I sat down to watch the special, it was only because my friends were watching it. I don't regret it at all. <laughs> I genuinely liked it. The only thing I didn't like was fucking the weed shit. They need to get rid of the weed shit. Well, you are missing out on some of the weed shit jokes because yeah. the last season was entirely the weed farm. And for the yeah. second half of the season, it was just about how stupid the weed farm is. And it was about how they wanted the show to get canceled because they don't like, they don't want to write anymore. Okay. And they're just like, aha, weed farm, bet you don't want us to do this anymore. Yeah. And it just became a meta of like, shut the fuck up about the weed farm. Yeah. I think the uh, the best thing about this episode was, A, it was like, I just did not expect Randy to fuck a bat and that to be what started <laughs> coronavirus. And then they're like, oh, no, it wasn't bad. He actually fucked a pangolin. Uh-huh. Not a penguin. A, 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 a it looked pangolin. like a Pokemon. <laughs> I think it's um, like a, it's like an armadillo. Yeah, basically. they just blended all the things of 2020. We had the coronavirus, we had police brutality, we had fucking just like people being absolute pieces of shit. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite part about it was Cartman, through and through. Yeah, because he was, did not do anything I expected him to do. I like that Cartman got a redemption arch that he's never gotten in any South Park. He's always been a piece of shit. Yeah, and then at this one, he finally decides to give up his own happiness to help somebody. Yeah, and the second he does it, Donald Trump shows up, lights a pangolin on fire, and plunges America yeah. back into COVID. It was uh, I remember my being being very impressed with what they did. I was like, wow. Even even fucking Eric Cartman can do something right. <laughs> and then Donald Trump shows up and is just like, no, and that you is, idiot. <laughs> that is coming from South Park, which has been like, they talk about politics, but they have been an apolitical entity yeah. for 23 years. They very famously have their, their douche versus a turd sandwich episode, mm-hmm. which is just spanned forever. Yeah. Always implying that it doesn't fucking matter and politics is dumb. Yeah. And even they're now having to come out and be like, no, no, this guy's yeah. lighting everything Politics on fire. isn't dumb anymore. It's <laughs> dumb, but you have to participate. I think uh, it is enough, just to keep going, Paul, it is just another thing of, like, I wanted that to make me feel better, that episode, and it really didn't. Mm. But I felt like I got some good stuff out of it. But Randy had to come on weed. And, and people yeah. were smoking his cum weed, and then he turned to zombies, which I thought was stupid. <laughs> but it was worth it to get to the end um, when the cops are just going through. <laughs> cops become teachers, and then they go through South Park in tanks because they get refunded, and they start murdering everyone. The uh, the the number one takeaway, I think, for sticking to television and not getting into what they were even trying to say yeah. um, is that South Park just needs to do this from now on. This needs to be the new thing. Yeah. They need to make four specials every season and that's all they do is make specials because yeah. famously when South Park made its biggest turn to being not as good is when they were mid election in 2016 and they had to rewrite everything cuz no one expected it to go that yeah. way and that's why Mr. Garrison is still Donald Trump yeah. and the show just kind of I see that also Mr. Garrison being Donald Trump I literally was just like wait who the fuck is that <laughs> and Mr. Garrison's Donald Trump now yeah um, uh, I agree. That's the question: dude. Will Mr. Garrison go back to being Mr. Garrison if Trump loses? How's that going to work out? I think he should because I think that I to see Mr. Mr. Garrison. Garrison in the classroom te- teaching those kids, I think it's going to be like a 
another like cathartic thing of like <laughs> if all this nightmare ends for at least a second without without going super deep into what the world we live in yeah um it'd be nice to see uh but going off of the special thing i think this of every show that's just too fucking long like mm. south park's been going for fucking 80 billion years like yeah just two specials they don't wa- i don't think they want do they want to keep making seasons like this uh i can't imagine <laughs> Uh, Matt and Trey have stated in interviews that they will not stop making South Park unless they're canceled. Oh, they God. just won't stop, and they're just they want the fucking bag. Like, and I respect it so heavily. I just don't, <laughs> like, they have so much money. They have to have a fuckload of it's money. Probably fun as fuck to write South Park episodes, yeah. even if you're if you know the best is behind you. Yeah, the fuck do you care anymore? They're both dads. Like they're just, they're That's just true. they show up, they hang out with their friends and they write T V episodes together. They also get to make video games when they want to make video games. Yeah. They got to write a Broadway play when they were like, We want to write a Broadway play. I feel they like we would definitely movies. take a similar yeah, <laughs> I, like, I think if we, if this ever blew, we'd probably feel the same. Be like, yeah. yeah, I don't care, I'm not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's funny, fuck it. Yeah. Um South Park, good episode. Keep going yeah. like this. I don't give a fuck about a sick season. Sick with the specials. Yeah, we're sick of it. All right, let's, <laughs> let's move into our next topic, which is uh, music. Music. Still kind of tied to television. Good yeah, segue. I guess so. SNL is back. Yep. Speaking of things going on way too fucking long, yep. you should only do specials. <laughs> One Saturday a year, you get. Yeah. <laughs> For two hours. You can get two hours yeah. out of us. Um. Yeah, they came back. They were gonna have a music and a comedy host as yep. they as as SNL does classic as, stuff. As they should, yeah, yeah. Back, back to the basics. And uh, then their music host got caught on social media partying and raging it up with no mask on. Yes, and, and SNL said, "Yep, this is actually a segue into something I've been wanting to say." Mm. Listen, you posturizing fucking idiots. <laughs> I know you think you're being brave on Twitter saying, wear a mask and stay inside, but I also want you to know, I see you on social media. I know who's not doing it, and everyone knows. <laughs> I think it's the funniest fucking thing to just see this dude be like, oh, yeah, I lost SNL, which I don't know who this dude's name is. I probably would have after. Uh... His name is Morgan Wallen. He does country music. Now, every every time I hear the name Morgan Wallen, I'm going to think, guy who didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, he did say that he's been told he might be invited back on later, and he did just apologize. And he's like, "I fucked up, and I need to grow up." He looks like early twenties. I don't want him to make just, it. Like chilling. <laughs> I don't want him to make it. I don't care. You're not in college. Yeah. Grow the fuck up. They did replace him with Jack White though. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, and I just heard just incredible things about Jack White's uh, music performances. Nice. Oh God, would love to would love to have seen that. In general, though, just very funny. Yeah. Hilarious that somebody lost a. A life-changing and career-altering decision because they wouldn't wear it. not just because they wouldn't wear masks, but because they filmed themselves not wearing masks yeah. after securing a deal <laughs> to be on one of the most famous television shows in the world. Like, just said, I'll say it one more time, dude. We see what the fuck you're doing. Just don't post it. Don't do it. First off, yeah. But Jesus Christ. Um, and then I guess in the same ballpark, we're sticking to music, but I'll bring yeah. it up. Bill Burr. Uh, was the comedian that opened, mm-hmm. and he did an entire uh, bit just about uh, woke culture and the fact that it kind of got co-opted by a bunch of white people who were already pretty far up there on the on yeah. the food chain of socioeconomic levels. Yeah, and it was just it was the only it wasn't that funny of a set, mm-hmm. but the reactions from an SNL audience, which is just a bunch of generally speaking affluent yeah. people being told that they're not really the fucking change we need to see in the world and them getting mad and not laughing and not clapping and then yeah it was it was awkward and fucking hilarious to watch him half bomb yeah i did like it uh like like what you see on twitter now where people just saying like yeah no fuck y'all bill burr was right because bill burr is such an easy like well bill burr sucks because he hates women which like yeah, he said some dumb shit before, but like, it is kind of nice to see someone say, like, come out and say some shit against it, and yeah. then have everyone back them up and be like, "Hey, yeah, you're not doing what we need you to do." Yeah. Also, I don't, I can't, I don't know all the quotes from Bill Burr, so I don't want to, don't want to misattribute and then put my foot in my mouth. But generally speaking, Bill Burr is a fucking comedian. Sometimes he's gonna say some shit he really shouldn't be fucking saying. Yeah. But it was probably a fucking joke. He yelled at Joe Rogan on his podcast. Because Joe Rogan's a fucking idiot. Yeah, it was very good. Very, yeah. very happy. Joe Rogan is a fucking idiot. Yeah, Joe Rogan. So he's coming to Austin. Joe Rogan, if you want to uh, guest star on our podcast, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. Closing out music. Yeah, closing out music. We'll get right into uh, video games. Yes. It's not a pretty transition for this one. No, not at all. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about this one. Uh, yeah. CD Projekt Red, if you are a gamer, you know all about them. They made the Witcher series. One of the, just the most highly praised studios working today, up there with like Naughty Dog and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. and the one thing that CD Projekt Red is known for is the quality of their games and their uh, friendly consumer practices. <laughs> and uh, they get their dicks sucked online all the time. Mm. CD Projekt Red. Well, Witcherino 3, the best game ever. But let me <laughs> tell you something. The, those great customer experiences you're getting, they're coming at a cost. CD Projekt Red said a year ago to Jason Schreier, who is the best in the business at games journalism, he's a complete dick and an asshole, but he breaks everything, and it's fucking awesome. Gotcha. He said that the CD Projekt Red lead told him that there would be no crunch for Cyberpunk 2077. If you don't know what crunch is because you're not a fucking capital G gamer, uh, crunch is when games are close to coming out or somewhat close to coming out, mm-hmm. and they basically tell everybody that works on the game, you don't get to see your families, you don't get to go home, you're working 20-hour days, and you're going to sleep under your cubicle for four yeah. hours. And this isn't even up to release. There is a day one update and another update they have to work on the second the game gets released to, to patch all these things. Essentially, their life sucks well after the release. Um, CD Projekt Red, though, they did it good because they lied about saying they wouldn't, weren't going to do crunch, <laughs> and then an email went out suggesting they do six-day uh, six work weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, no, it wasn't suggested. It was, it was mandated. Um, but the thing about this is that you need to start... You need to remember that no matter how good a fucking game is, no matter how hard you fucking dick ride uh, game developers, they're there taking advantage of their employees, and these employees are not making enough money to work for six-day fucking weeks yeah. for three months out of the year. These people have families. Their video games are, are well-known for underpaying as far as the sar- software field goes. Um, I want to talk about that. It's, it's one of the biggest things in gaming right now. And again, it... it Stop fucking sucking the dicks of companies. I yeah, just don't understand it. Because, like, yeah. in the article, they bring up that they were getting defended a lot because they do things like they've given away Witcher 3. You can get it on a couple sites for yeah. free. Um, and they're like, well, that's just such a nice thing for them to do. And you're like, yeah, but they didn't do it because they were like, let's do a nice thing. They did it because it can make them more money in yeah. the long run. Which also, that, that wasn't nice for their fucking employees. Yeah, exactly. If they th- um, if they found if they thought being nice to their employees would raise the their bottom dollar, they'd do it instantly. But it, yeah. it's never going to. So the defenses were funny because they were like, "But it was only a six day work week." <laughs> we're like, "What do you mean? They're, 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 we don't sleep at the office here. We're we're a fun, good cultured company." Ugh. CD Projekt Red, your company. Will I buy your game? Eh, we'll see. But still, suck my dick. Yeah. Just stop defending them. Not even like saying you need to boycott. Yeah. My God, just don't, don't defend, defend companies. It. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> if Netflix does something shitty tomorrow, I'm not defending them. We're gonna talk shit about them. As also we do. One of the only companies I just don't know if I could get the boycott off. But I probably think if they did something horrendous enough, I would. But I could boycott Netflix. But I don't. Th- I. It's one of those things where I genuinely just don't think there's a point. Yeah. Because no one there's gonna be like us and then like ten other people who do it. And we're like, okay, yeah. well, whatever. Okay, you ready for our last topic, the random? Yeah, man, we're making good time burning through these. Yeah, other than politics, you guys had to sit through that one for <laughs> yeah, a bit. Yeah, I liked I it. I hope it was entertaining. Yeah. Uh, So, random. It is about movies. Yep. Because we don't have a movie topic, obviously, because we got monthly movie reviews. Yep. Um, Dune and Batman, dummy delayed. Oh, dude, in the worst way, too. D-D-D-D, Dune, Batman, Dummy, Delayed. Heart, heartbreaking. You texted me the morning it happened. This is rare, yeah. actually. Jesse texted me movie news that I didn't know about. <laughs> I woke up and I read that text, and I was like, yeah. Well, God's testing me in many ways today. <laughs> this is about Batman. We weren't that upset about the Dune delay. Yeah, I don't care. It's a science fiction nerd book, but Batman <laughs> Batman matters. <laughs> Batman forged uh, children's lives, <laughs> and uh, I want it. And Robert Pattinson is dummy sexy and a great actor, and I want to see him again. <laughs> yeah, I think Robert Pattinson's hot. That's why I want Batman. <laughs> I think it sucks I just don't care about Dune, and uh, it, it got... An, actually, no, we're not even going to talk about that. Right now, we're going to talk about the trailers for both these movies. Okay. Uh, Dune came out uh, about three weeks ago. The Dune trailer came out three weeks ago saying it was coming out in December. Yeah. The Batman trailer came out two months ago saying it was coming out uh, October 2021. Why the fuck would you say that? In the middle, yeah. No fucking point. You These conversations were already happening. Yeah. They were already fucking happening. Tenant was projected to do dog shit. Tenant did dog shit. Actually, yeah. Tenant did amazing for what it for, got. For, when, for the fact that only half the theaters are open. 
Yeah. It still made its money back. It didn't lose money. Yeah. So, but Whoa. that's not what it should have done. Yeah, but I, I, I bet the number we see on Wikipedia and the real number is very different. Yeah. But also, it's it's a Chris Nolan movie. I. It was their fault. I don't know why WB thought they were going to kickstart the fucking resurgence of movie theaters. It was also horribly irresponsible now that you, Oh, God, now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> No, um, I liked it. We needed it. Back. I liked it too, but it was also just like. But I also we have the Alamo that made it yeah. safe, and other theaters aren't going to do that. Yeah, but the, like the main point is like, dude, what the fuck was the point? You're literally just complaining about losing your shit, and that, a bunch of other movies are delayed too. But I think that like, this is also going. You have to think about the movie theaters that are going to go out of business now. Yep. Which I mean was going to happen anyway. But you got to like, think about all the small people that work on sets and. Are we're, we're aspiring actors have just yeah. gotten their shit on. They're pause not getting for, taken care of. Yeah, no, it's the, the influx yeah. out of L.A. right now has to be insane. Yeah, um, it but, sucks. Uh, hopefully, the movie. I mean, no matter what, the thing is, the movie industry will recover. It's yeah. not going to go away because I part of me but, is just starting to hope that digital is going to be the future. There's not really. Mm-hmm. A, I don't see another way forward unless. Life goes back to normal, and I don't think it's gonna anytime soon. Damn, that was a depressing one to end on. We should have reordered our fucking topics. My God. Um, I have good news for the Batman and the Dune. Yeah, hit it. Batman's being directed by the guy who did all the Planet of the Apes, so when it comes out, it's gonna be amazing. Both of these movies are going to be amazing. They're just not coming out yeah. soon. If Batman isn't amazing, then we're gonna have like eight different episodes where we brought up Batman. I mean, fuck, it's not coming out till twenty twenty two. Yeah, we have we're gonna of time. have forty episodes where we're gonna say, I can't wait for Batman and You're then so it... good at math. <laughs> I think about it all the time. Fuck. That wasn't even accurate. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got it right. In my head, you're oh, you're yeah. batting a hundred every yeah, time. Perfect. Oh man! Well, uh, I guess that wraps our variety hour. Um, I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do we got next week? Uh, next week we have an in the lab. Perfect. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'll tell you it's a bit of a throwback. A bit of a throwback uh, in the lab. I, I love the Easter egg, a little spoiler, yeah, the, it's the a little, little teaser, little, little teaser. The but trailer yeah. will come out soon, <laughs> but then we'll delay it till yeah 2020. <laughs> Thank you for uh, thank you for listening to the Loud and Short podcast for October. <laughs> <laughs> this has been your news. Yep.